Dear Martin, I begin this letter mindful of the events that took place in our nation 50 years ago, events that changed the United States. As you and other leaders of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference accelerated the challenge to the discriminatory practices prohibiting black people from registering and voting, in several southern states. A special campaign was launched in Alabama. A march from Selma to Montgomery was planned. At the end, the demonstrators were to present the governor with a list of practices encountered by black citizens of that state. Hundreds gathered on Sunday March 7, 1965, 50 years ago. State officials had determined the march would not occur and banned the planned demonstration. As the marches began to move across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, they were met by a sizable police presence on the bridge. Some of the police were on horses. When the peaceful marchers refused to disband, they were attacked by the police, beaten and trampled by horses. Mass hysteria erupted. Wounded and bloodied, the nonviolent, peaceful protesters were turned back. Millions witnessed the brutal attacks on television and in newspaper photos. So vicious were, were they that, that the day became known as Bloody Sunday. The nation was horrified to see peaceful citizens so brutalized as they sought only to be granted the right to vote in their own country. Only days later, Martin, you called for a second march. This time, some 25,000 people responded. Celebrities, church leaders, pastors, ordinary citizens. And the march was fully racially integrated. It ended on the steps of the Capitol in Montgomery with leaders presenting their concerns and grievances and demands. Five months later in August, what is commonly called the Voting Rights Act was law. Congress passed the 1965 Civil, Civil Rights Act because of the bold leadership of President Lyndon B. Johnson for the first time, for the first time, black citizens anywhere in America had the right to register, vote protected against intimidation, unfair and discriminatory regulations, fear of reprisals or violence. Imagine it was only 50 years ago that the most basic right of a democracy, the right to vote, was guaranteed to black American citizens only 50 years ago. In a few months, thousands of us will gather again at the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma we will remember those who led the way, some even giving their lives, that we might today exercise the right to cast a ballot freely and unafraid. 
sadly, Martin, we will do so in the face of new threats to that right as many state legislatures enact laws to make it more difficult for citizens to exercise their right. So the struggle continues. Martin, we again reminded of the deep racial divide in America. The deaths of a number of unarmed black youth and men at the hands of police have drawn national attention. Those who died in Brooklyn, New York, Cleveland, and Ferguson, Missouri were males in their teens. Two of the deaths, one in Ferguson and the other in Staten Island, New York, went before grand jury. Neither resulted in an indictment against the police involved. The failures to indict have resulted in thousands demonstrating in major cities across the nation. There's general outrage and anger in the black community and beyond. Is America again to have two societies? one black or non-white, and one white, separate and unequal, and composed, as many believe, of two justice systems, one for white citizens and one for non-white citizens. Is there the belief that black life is not as valued in our nation as white life. Indeed, a new slogan has emerged, Black Lives Matters. A national conversation on race is emerging. With it is coming the revelation that white and black citizens view race dramatically differently. Even in these two widely known incidents of unarmed black young men meeting death as a result of police action, a significant number of white citizens conclude the deaths were clearly the fault of the black men, while black citizens believe they were caused by an underlying racism that views white and black people differently. White life is valued more than black. Perhaps, Martin, that is still what is at the heart of the great racial divide in America. Still, it appears the matter of one's worth as a human being is finally about the color of one's skin, not the content of one's character, morality, ability, or competence. Indeed, there seems no correlation between scoring a winning touchdown or basket, or between one's abilities, political positions, or party, and one's determined ultimate worth as a human being. Could it be that in the minds and hearts of so many Americans, skin color determines one's worth and value? We continue to face a lot of work in this nation on the issue of race. At times, we appear to move backwards and forwards simultaneously. The truth is, Martin, the events of the last 50 years are evidence of how far we have come on our journey to become one nation unto God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. But 
I'm afraid the last 50 days are evidence as well of how far we've yet to go. But I still believe, Martin, that we shall overcome. Happy birthday, Martin. Happy birthday. Thank you.